wrote in 6.2, more logarithmic stuff to consider. Express the equation in logarithmic form here on number 2. And so, if we have e to the x equals 5, certainly we could put log base e of 5 equals x, and that would be valid. But they're asking us to put it in the form of natural log, so just remember, that's the same thing as a log base e. Log base e just has a shorthand of ln for natural log, so we just call it natural log of 5 equals x once you get that. So just remember that. If you ever have natural log, that's the same thing as log base e. It's just shorthand. And that's how I would recommend that. And so indeed, we have ourselves an a and a b here as 5 and an x. What else? Oh yeah, so then properties of logarithms. Here we're, we're starting to expand and contract logarithms. We can write log base 3 of all this mess in the form of a log 3x plus b log 3y. And so we'll see what this all looks like. Um, one thing to remember, okay, so, well, okay, quick take. I forget, this is just me showing you how I would do things. And so if I saw this, I would say, well, I see one expression timesing with another one. And so we'll break those into two pieces if I said that. Then in logarithm land, um, times is like plus. So we have log base 3 of x to the 7 plus the other logarithm, base 3 also of, was it radical, yeah, third root, third root of y to the 12, or whatever. And so then I, I took these two things that were timesing in a single logarithm, especially because they're in different letters, you know, different variables. It's hard to deal with two letters at once. And so I split them up into two logarithms as they had requested. And then now we're going to simplify that a little bit more. And so if I saw this exponent power of 7 out here, I would shoot it out in front. And so now we can just say it's a log base 3 of x without any complications inside times that answer by 7. And then the other one's a little bit tougher, so you got to kind of take it to the diary and remember that a cube root of y to the 12 is the same thing as saying y to the 12 over 3 power. And 12 over 3 reduces, so that ends up being y to the 4 over 1 power, or just y to the 4th. And so that's nice, because at that point I can say, well, forget this third root y 12 mess, and I'll just say that's 4 over 1, or just 4 power. And so we'll say, just like the last one, I'll put the 4 in front. And then of, of log base 3, 4 times log base 3 of y. That's how I'd kind of do that, because it would have been a y to the 4th, and then the 4 power becomes timesing out in front of the whole logarithm. That's what I would do with that one. Same idea on the second, or sorry, on number 5. Only thing I might mention there is that, let's see here, we'll clean up a little space in the diary here. Only thing that's otherwise worth mentioning there is that we have a few things going on, a few logarithmic expressions to split this up into. We have an x, a y, and a z. Since we have an x, a y, and a z, I'll just do them as three different ones, remembering that times is like plus and divide is like minus. This is a common log, so we don't have to mention the, the base number, so it's log base, or just log of 6x, and then log of, or x to the 6th, and then y uh, to the 17th, and then log z to the 5. And then remember, since the x and the y are timesing, times is like plus, and since the z is being divided, that's going to be minus, so divide is like minus. And then we'll just do the same trick with the exponents. The 6 will come out front, so that'll be 6 log of x. Whoops. 6 log of x plus 17 log of y minus 5 log z. Whoa. Just, it's supposed to say log. 5 log z, looking good. What else here? Um, la, la, la. We have to... Okay, simplify this, enter it as a single logarithm. So we're going backwards here now. If we're squashing these into a single logarithm, then that plus becomes a times again. So this would be log base 8, a single logarithm now, of those two things scrunching together, but then plus becomes like times again. 
So this is like 11x to the 5 timesing with 12x7. And then we'll probably go ahead and squash those together because they're timesing inside here. So this is log base 8 of a big old mess. 11 times 12 we could probably do. That's 132. And then x to the 5 times x to the 7 is x12. And now we have log base 8 of 132x12 is what we'll be looking at, I guess. And then same idea, simplifying to a single logarithm with these things. They got coefficients out in front of them. And so remember how that goes. This before we squash them into a single log, that's a common log of 5. And then I'll put that 3 in the exponent spot. So it'll be 3 to the 5 power. I mean, 5, five to the 3. 5 to the 3 power plus, and then log, common log of x, and then that 2 that's timesing out in front will become an exponent, so x to the 2 power. And then we'll squash them into a single logarithm where it'll be like log, common log of 5 to the 3 times x to the 2. 5 to the 3, you could probably just call 125x squared. Something like that, timesing with x squared, so they just be next to each other or something like that. Looks like they want theirs in some funny factored version. So maybe figure out how that goes. I'm looking if they have, oh yeah, it looks like they're looking like that. Yeah, 5 to the 3, x to the 2. So, well, anyway, whatever. And then, okay, this one has uh, just weird directions on it that gets a lot of people, so I wanted to bring this one up. They say if natural log of A equals 2, natural log of B equals 3, and natural log of C equals 5, evaluate the following. It'd be nice to just plug these things in and be like, well, A is 2 and B is 3, but it's not that A is 2. They don't say A is 2. They say natural log of A is 2. So we don't get to actually put a 2 into the equation or an expression or whatever until we see an ln of A. What we got here is an A and a B and a C to all different powers. We don't got ln of A. So we got to like make that work. So natural log of A, natural log of B, natural log of C. Looks like we got to split these things up into different logarithms before anything will work. That's what I'm thinking here. So let's see. If we tried this first one here, natural log of all that stuff, we'd probably say natural log of A to the fourth. First off, and then the other things are dividing on the bottom. So since dividing is like minus, when we split them up, they'll both be minus. So this is natural log of A to the fourth minus natural log of B to the minus four. Then natural log, and then also minusing the C part, natural log of C to the minus one. Minusing both of those because they're both on the divide part on the bottom. From there, what I would do is maybe we'll just get rid of the exponents again because then we'll have natural log of A, natural log of B, and natural log of C, and it'll be good. So if I have a fourth power in front of the A, we'll put it in front of the natural log. So four times of the natural log of A. And then minus a negative four times of the natural log of B. What's the double negative there? And then minus a negative one timesing with the natural log of, it's supposed to say natural log, natural log, whatever, of C. And then we can finally do what we want. Looks like my LNs are looking more like a cursive H at this point, but whatever. And so now we'll just remember, oh, natural log of A, I know what that is, that's two. So if I have four times the natural log of A, that's four times two. And then minus of a minus, we'll just call that a plus. And then 4 times natural log B, but natural log B, we'll put a little parentheses times, I don't know, but natural log B is, what did we say? Natural log B is 3. So that's 4 times 3. And then another double negative becomes a plus, and then we have 1 timesing with natural log C, which is 5. And we'll just times them all out and stuff, watch the expression. So... Here we go, let's see how that goes. This would be 8, 4 times 2 is 8, plus 4 times 3 is 12, plus 1 times 5 is 5, and we'll just plus away. And so 8 plus 12 is 20, plus 5, I'm getting 25 when I do this. The other ones handle very similarly, but I figured I'd at least show you 
maybe like part B because it's weird. So if I had something like part B, I'm noticing there's this bit of big, it's like a big radical over the whole thing. And so that might be throwing people off. Let's go ahead and talk about that for a second while I spend all my time. So I paused the recording and then came back and then I was going to pause it again and then I realized that it was already paused and I don't know what the heck happened. So whatever. Let's just hope I'm not repeating myself. I wanted to show you guys at least how how um, to set up part B here. I hope I didn't already say this. So natural log of all this stuff, we have a square root of b to the 1, c to the 3, a to the 4. I just would remind you that that's the same thing as saying natural log of, and then put a different square root over each one of those. So that's square root of b1, square root of c3, square root of a4. And then from there, you can more easily split this up because before you try and turn the times into plus and all that we do, we'll just remember that square roots or radicals is like a half power. So when I have b to the 1 square rooted, that's b to the 1 over 2 power. And c to the 3 square rooted is c to the 3 over 2 power. And a to the 4 square rooted is a to the 4 over 2. And it's okay, once again, to say that 4 over 2 is just a 2 over 1 or just a whole number of 2. And so it's okay just to say a to the 2 if you like on that part. And then see where you can take that from there. See if you can go from there. Okay, next deal up. If we have this equation given, we're supposed to put this junk into logarithmic form. And so we'll see how that goes. But the thing is, it has a times 50 out in front. And that's a little weird. So we might have to clean that up. Because it's funky. Normally I have something to the x power equals whatever. And we have all hit that here. But we also have an extra number timesing. I just don't like it. And so the 50 is not part of the x power, you know. Or else we wouldn't put the funny parentheses like we do. So I'm going to go ahead and divide the 50 out is what I would do. And then we have 1.26 to the x power equals 3050 divided by 50. Let me pause for a second. I'm going to figure that out. I don't know how many times that goes in. Actually, here. This will be fun. We'll just try and figure it out together. Uh, zero is canceled, and it's 5 into 305. 5 into 300 would go 60 times. So this is 61, I guess. And then Adam puts all these question marks around because I'm not really sure. But I'm pretty sure about that one, actually. I don't think I messed anything up on that. So then we'll say 61 times. Pretty confident there. I'm gonna, well, let's just, we'll boldly erase my question marks. And then now from here, we got to put this in the log form because it's hard to solve this if I have my variable is up in the exponent spot. That's what logarithms are all about. And so we'll fix that and we'll say this is log base of 1.26. Log base 1.26. Oh, I don't need parentheses around that part. Gosh dang it. Okay, log base 1.26 of 61 equals x. And now if you've got a real strong calculator, it might actually let you just choose 1.26 as a base and just sho shove it in the calculator that way. Otherwise, we use the change of base formula, which is powerful for different reasons, but um, is powerful definitely in this instance, but it, it's actually worth your time trying this out. And so, um, for the sake of, um, how should we say, uh, being able to work with logarithms in a simplified form, you know, as things get more complicated, it's good to know about change of base. It helps at times. And we'll say this could also be equivalent by change of base formula. That's a common log of 61 over a common log of 1.26. Or some people choose natural logs instead of common logs. And then you can just, now you have one log divided by another log, and they're both common logs. And then that's another thing you can shove into the calculator and just say log of this divided by log of that. And then, of course, if you have trouble making your calculator work to give you what you want, let me know. And, you know, we'll, we'll figure out whatever kind of calculator you're using will make it work. And then you get some answer and then round it off to three places past the decimal. Giddy up there, that's all we got for this one.